We're going to talk about Moses, Moshe. His birth, where he came from. We're going to look at it from the Bible, from the book of Exodus, and we're going to look at it from the book of Joshua. We're studying, I'm, I'm going back to the Hebrew Bible because there's more there. I mean, when I read it from the English Bible, take all and put all these notes in there would be impossible, but when I'm looking at the Hebrew, it's easier to do that. So, the translation is not as smooth, but it's better. Not as smooth, but it's better. Why yet so faro le call amo le mor call habem haya lord haya ra tash le kuhu we call havak ti hayun. I just read that so you sound so you could see what the Hebrew word sounded like. And it's a Wayitsu here, it says, and he commanded, third person master and singular, PL while consecutive perfect. That word PL tense means what? Harsh, powerful, intense. And he immensely and intensely commanded favorable to all the people, saying, Every son, the one being born, the river. You shall cast him in the river, and all daughters you shall keep alive. Wailek ish mabet. Lui hayaka et bat levi. And went a man from the house of Levi. Levi remains, remains joined, remember. And he took and kept on taking a daughter of Levi. Now, the woman's name that he took was Jochebed. Jochebed was 126 years old when he married her. This is a real uh, miraculous situation here. Now she's not only 126 old, old years old when he, he marries her, but she is still fertile and virile at 126 years old. Jochebed's name is Jehovah is Honor. Then Amran Amram, that's, that's the, the Levite, this is Abraham's father. Jochebed is his aunt, his father's sister. And she's old. But she is in good shape still. She's got all of her teeth, Marilyn. And she's in good shape. Jasher 67, verses 1 on. Talks about this. She was 126 old when she married her nephew, nephew Amram. And then she had a child, and she called that child Miriam, because her life was bitter. Because Pharaoh, he began to kill the babies, male children of Israel. Now, she had a son uh, named Aaron, and Jochebed had sent her away for three years not to live with him so she wouldn't get pregnant. He'd sent her away three years. Mm -hmm. And then when she comes back, she has this child. She gets pregnant again. Now remember, Levi had died in Egypt. He was about 137 years old in 1540 B.C. Exodus 6, 18 through 20 tells us that, and Numbers 3, 19, the first Chronicles 6 and 2, and 23, 13. The, uh, the child that she would bear 
was named uh, Shavar. 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 C H A B A R or B A R. And that means united again because he came back with his wife and they were reunited. The, word, the boy's name was Shavar Isles. And, um, <clears throat> and he had another name. Moses had many names, actually. He was named by his father, David Shabar. Now let's go back and read the book of Jasher and says what, look, see what the book of Jasher says more about this situation here. There was a man in the land of Egypt of the seed of Levi, whose name was Amram, the son of Kahath, the son of Levi, the son of Israel. And this man went in and took a wife, namely Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, his father's sister. And she was 126 years old, and he came unto her. In other words, he uh, penetrated her for the first time. She was a virgin. That's what it says. And she conceived again and bore a son, her first child was Miriam, because the Egyptians had embittered their lives. He called, she called her child Miriam, or bitter. Then she conceived again and bare a son, and she called his name Aaron. For in the days of her conception, Pharaoh began to spill the blood of the male children of Israel. And that talks about Pharaoh dreaming about a child. In the 130th year of Israel's going down to Egypt, Pharaoh dreamed that he was uh, sitting upon his kingly throne and lifted up his eyes and saw an old man standing before him and there were scales in the hands of the old man. Such scales are used by merchants. And the old man took the scales and hung them before Pharaoh. And the old man took all the elders of Egypt and all the nobles and great men and he tied them together and put them on one side of the scale. And he took a milk kid and put it on the other scale and the kid predominated over all. And Pharaoh was astonished at this dreadful vision and why the kid should perpetrate over all of Pharaoh awoke and behold it was a dream. Pharaoh rose early in the morning again, and all his servants related to them the dream, and the men were greatly afraid. And the king said to all his wise men, and interpret, I pray the dream I dreamed, that I may know it. Now Balaam the son of Baor answered the king and said to them, This means nothing else but a great evil that will spring up against Egypt in the latter days. For a son will be born to Israel, who will destroy all Egypt and its inhabitants and bring forth the Israelites from Egypt with a mighty hand. Now therefore, king, take counsel upon this matter. You may destroy the hope of the children of Israel and their expectation before this evil arises in your land. And the king said to Balaam, What shall I we do in Israel? Surely after a certain manner did we at first counsel against them and could not prevail over them. Therefore give you also some advice against them by which we may prevail over them. And Balaam answered the king, saying, Send now and call two counselors, and we will see what their advice is upon this matter, and afterward your servant will speak. And he sent and called two counselors, Ruel the Midianite and Job the Izzite, and they came and sat before the king. And the king said to them, Behold, you have both heard the dream which I have dreamed, and the interpretation thereof, and therefore give counsel and know that see what is to be done to the children of Israel, whereby we may prevail over them before their evil shall spring upon us. Now rule. Midianite. Now, Rule, this is the father in law of Moses, by the way. 
answered the king and said, May the king live. May the king live forever. And if it seems good to the king, let him desist from the Hebrews and leave them alone. And let him not stretch out his hand against them. For these are they whom the Lord chose in the days of old and took as the lot of his inheritance from amongst the nations of the earth and the kings of the earth. And who is there that stretched out his hand against them with impunity and whom God was not avenged? Surely you know that when Abraham went down to Egypt, Pharaoh, the former king of Egypt, saw Sarah, his wife, and took her wife, because Abraham said, She's my sister. For he was afraid. And lest the man of Egypt should slay him on account of his wife. When the king of Egypt had taken Sarah, then God smote him in his household with the heavy plagues until he restored unto Abraham his wife, Sarah. And then he was healed. And Abimelech, Gerite, the king of the Philistines, God punished on account of Sarah, his wife of Abraham, and stopping up every womb from man to beast. And when their God came to Abimelech in a dream at night and terrified him in order that he might restore Abraham and Sarah, whom he had taken, afterward all the people girl were punished on account of Sarah. And Abraham prayed to his God for them, and he was entreated of him, and he healed them. And Abimelech feared all this evil that came upon him and his people. He returned to Abraham to his wife Sarah and gave him with her many gifts. The used wife sells, remember? And did it also with Isaac when he had driven him from Gazar. God had done wonderful things to him. And all the water courses of Gerar were dried up and their productive trees did not bring forth. Until Abimelech, Gerar, and Uzzah one of his friends, and Pekal, the son of the host, went to him, and they bent and bowed down before him to the ground. And they requested him to supplicate for them, and he prayed for them, to the Lord for them, and the Lord was entreated of him, and he healed them. This is the other half of the story. This is the rest of the story, as Halifun used to say. And Jacob also, the plain man, was delivered through the integrity of the hand of his brother Esau. And the hand of Laban, the Syrian, his mother's brother, who had sought for his life, and likewise from the land of the, all the kings of Canaan, who had come together against him and his children to destroy him, then the Lord delivered them out of their hands, and they turned upon them and smote them. For they had ever stretched forth his hand against them with impunity. Surely, Pharaoh, the former, your father's father, raised Joseph, the son of Jacob, above all the princes of the land of Egypt. He said, the other former ruler of Egypt, you know. This is not really your family, but this is the one way back yonder. When he saw his wisdom for his wisdom, he rescued all the inhabitants of the land from the famine. After which he ordered Jacob and his children to come down to Egypt in order that through their virtue the land of Egypt and the land of Goshen might be delivered from the famine. And it was. Now therefore, if it seem good in your eyes, cease from withdrawing the children of Israel, but if it be not, I will, that they shall dwell in Egypt, send them forth from here, that they may go from the land of Canaan and the land where their ancestors lived and pilgrims. And Pharaoh heard the words of Jethro, and he was angry with the man. So he arose with shame from the king's presence and went to Midian, his land, and took Joseph's stick with him. Boy, this is the story right here. Joseph's stick. He took Joseph's stick with him. The stick which Joseph held in his hand when he ruled all of Egypt is the stick which Adam carried with him, which is the stick that God gave to Adam that God held in his hand when he created the heavens and the earth. He created it before he created anything else, and it was an almond rod that it was created before almond trees were. And it had a sapphire stone in the head of it. And the king said to Job the Uzzite, What sayest thou, Job? What's your advice respecting the Hebrew? Behold, all the inhabitants of the land are in your power. Let the king do as it seems good in his eyes. And the king said unto Balaam, What do you say, Balaam? 
Speak word now that I may hear it. And Balaam said to the king of all the king who had counseled against the Hebrews, Will they be delivered? And the king will not be able to prevail over them with any counsel. And if you think to lessen them by the, the flaming fire, you cannot prevail over them, for surely their God delivered Abraham from their father, from Ur of the Chaldees. And if you think that you can destroy them with a sword, surely Isaac, their father, was delivered from a man, and a ram was placed in his stead. And of hard, rigorous labor, you think, to lessen them, you'll not prevail over them. For their father Jacob served Laban in a all manner of hard work and prospered. Jacob was a strong man, and these are a strong people. Therefore, O king, hear my voice. This is the counsel which is counseled against them by which you will prevail over them from which you shall not depart. If it please the king, let him order all her children which shall be born from this day forward to be thrown into the water. For by this you can wipe away their name, for none of them nor of their fathers were tried in this manner. And the king heard the word of Balaam, and the king pleased the king, and the princes and the king did according to the word of Balaam. And the king ordered a proclamation to be issued, and land that made throughout the land of Egypt, that every male child to the Hebrews from that day forward shall be thrown into the river. And the river were crocodiles and large animals, or not large animals, but large uh, fish big enough to eat them. They would be fish food. Pharaoh called all his servants, saying, Go now and seek throughout the land of Goshen the children of Israel are, and see every son that is born to Hebrews, and shall cast them to the river, and every daughter you shall let live. And when the children of Israel heard this thing which Pharaoh had commanded, they cast their male children into the river, and some of the people separated from their wives, and others adhered to them. Some of them separated from the wives so they wouldn't have any more children. They were distressed. They didn't want to have any children if they had to kill them. And from that day forward, when the time of delivery arrived, the women of Israel who had remained with their husbands, they went to the field to bring forth there, and they brought forth in the field and left their children upon the field and returned home. They just left them there. And the Lord, who had sworn to their ancestors to multiply them, sent one of his ministering angels, which is in heaven, to wash each child in water and anoint and swathe him and put him in the hands of two smooth stones, one from which he sucked milk and one from which he sucked honey, and he caused the hair to grow to his knees, by which he might cover himself to comfort it all and to cleave to it and through his compassion for it. This is what Jasher said. Whether it is true or not, this is what he wrote down in his book. And when God had compassion over them and desired to multiply them upon the face of the land, he ordered his earth to receive them to be preserved there until the time of growing up, which the earth opened its mouth and vomited forth, and they sprouted forth from the city like the herb of the earth and the grass of the field, and they returned to each his family and his father's house, and they remained with them. And the babies of the children of Israel were born upon the earth like the herb of the field, God's grace upon them. Moses is born. Whether this is fiction or whatever, it doesn't matter. That's what he wrote in this book. But now let's see what happened when Moshe, Moshe is born. And it was the time of the Spirit of God was upon Miriam, the daughter of Abraham, or Amram and a sister of Aaron, and she went forth prophesying about the house, saying, Behold, the son will be born unto us from my father and mother this time, and he will save Israel from the hands of Egypt. Now, we know that she was a prophetess. That's what it said in the Old Testament. When Amran heard the words of his daughter, he went and took his wife back to the house, and he had driven her away at the time when Pharaoh ordered every male child of the house of Jacob to be thrown into the waters. And Abram took Jacob and his wife, and three years after he had driven her away, and he came to her, and she caught seed. 
And in the seven months from her conception, she brought forth a son, a seven-month-old child. Seven is a number of perfection in it. But he's supposed to have been there nine months. And the whole house was filled with great light and the light of the sun and the moon, the time of their shining. And when the woman saw the child, it was good and pleasing in her sight. And she hid it for three months in an inner room in the outhouse in the house. In those days, the Egyptians conspired to destroy all the Hebrews there. And the Egyptian women went from Goshen, where the children of Israel were, and they carried their young ones upon their shoulders, and their babies whom could not speak. And in those days, when the women of the children of Israel brought forth, each woman had hidden her son from before the Egyptians, and the Egyptians might not know their bringing forth, and might not destroy them from the land. And the Egyptian women came to the land of Goshen and their children who could not speak upon their shoulders. And when the Egyptian woman came into the house of the Hebrew woman, her baby began to cry. And when he cried, the child that was in the inner room answered it. So the Egyptian woman went and told it to the house of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh sent his altar to take the children and slay them. Thus did the Egyptians to the Hebrew women all those days. And it was at the time about three months from Jochebed's concealment of her son that the thing was known to Pharaoh's house. And the woman hastened to take away her son before the officer came. She took him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's bank in the reeds by the river's bank and his sister Miriam stood far off to know what would be done and what would become of her words. God sent forth at that time a terrible heat in the land of Egypt, which burned up the flesh of man like the sun in the circuit, and it greatly oppressed the Egyptians. And all the Egyptians went to bathe in the river on account of the consuming heat, which burned their flesh. And Bathia, the daughter of Pharaoh, went also to bathe in the river on the owing to the consuming heat and her maidens walked at the riverside and all the women of Egypt as well. Bathia means the daughter of God, by the way. And Bathia lifted up her eyes to the river and she saw an ark upon the water and she sent her maid to fetch it. And she opened it and saw the child and behold, the baby wept. And she had compassion on him and she said, this is one of the Hebrew children. And all the women of Egypt, walking by the riverside, desired to give him suck. But when he would not suck, for this saying was from the Lord, in order to restore him to his mother's breast. And Miriam, his sister, was at that time among the Egyptian women at the riverside, and she saw this saying, and she said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go fetch a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go, and the young woman went and called the child's mother in the and Pharaoh's daughter said to Jochebed, Take the child away and suckle it for me, and I will pay you your wages, two bits of silver daily. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And at the end of two years the child grew up, and she brought him to the daughter of Pharaoh, and he was under her as a son, and she called his name Moshe. Because she said, I drew him out of the river. Moshe means to draw out to rescue and Amram, his father, called his name Shabar. Shabar means reunited again because he, he had sent his wife away for three years and when she comes back they were united again and she conceived and she had this child. And Jochebed, his mother, called his name uh, Jechthuel. Jechthuel. He had a lot of names, didn't he? Jechthel means trust in God. Because she said, I have hoped for him, the Almighty, and God restored him unto me. And Miriam, his sister, called him Jared. His name, Jared, means descending. For she descended after him into the river to know what would be his end. And Aaron, his brother, called him Abi Zuluk saying, My father left my mother and returned to her on this account. Abi, his father, returned to his mother. 
And Kehoth, the father of Amram, called his name Abigor. Because on account of God did repair the breach of the house of Jacob. That they could no longer throw their male children in the water. And their nurse called him Abi Soko. Saying in his tabernacle he was hidden for three days, three months, and a count of the children of Ham. And Israel called his name Shemaiah, the son of Nathaniel. For they said, in the days God has heard their cries and rescued them from their oppressors. And Moses was in Pharaoh's house and was unto Bathia. Bathia means what? Daughter of God. Pharaoh's daughter as his son and Moses grew up amongst the king's children. What a story, huh? It is. It's quite a story. You know, I, I like to tell you what the Bible says and to translate it correctly for you. So you can see what it actually says there. And if there is anything like this in there in the book of Jasher or something, I want you to hear the rest of the story. Yeah. And that's the rest of the story. Yeah, it is. Our Father, we send this message out. It's quite a story about Moses' life, his protection, your, uh, to your eternal purpose and unpreventable progress. And Father, thank you for all the blessings you give us. Thank you for your word. And Father, please help me to feel better with my eyesight from this propane poisoning, the ophthalmic migraines and the blindness and the pain, all the muscle spasms that I have too. I ask you to help me with that. Help us with our home to get it finished here so it would be more comfortable and safer for us in our old age. Help me to get the right help and help us financially also that we may keep the websites going because we have all of this, all of these DVDs, CDs and things we have to buy and there's so much money and we haven't been getting enough offerings to do it. I pray, Father, that you provide for that. Father, please forgive me where I fail you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.